Greetings everyone. Welcome to today's lecture on evolution of painting in colonial India. When we discuss the term company painting or company style of painting, it basically refers to a hybrid Indo-European style of paintings that were made in India by several Indian artists, many of whom worked for European patrons in the British East India Company or other foreign companies between 18th and 19th centuries. The style blended traditional elements from several painting styles like Rajput style of painting or Mughal style of painting with a more uh, somewhat western treatment of perspective, volume and recession. Most of the paintings were small reflecting the continuity of Indian miniature tradition, but the natural history paintings of plants and birds were usually life size. So we see that there was both an aspect of continuity as well as change when we talk about company painting. Leading centers were the main British settlements of Calcutta, Chennai, Delhi, Lucknow, Patna as well as the Maratha court of Thanjavur. There were several interesting subjects that became part of company painting, for example portraits, landscapes, views, scenes of Indian people, dancers, festivals. There were a series of figures of different castes or trades also that were especially favorite among Englishmen. And there was lot of emphasis on differences in costume. And these costumes became very popular subjects also for analysis by historians of the imperialist mentality. Some of the major works belonging to this period include the artwork made by Mazhar Ali Khan who worked on Thomas Metcalfe's Delhi book. He was part of a dynasty of great miniature artists, the patriarch of whom Ghulam Ali Khan had worked for William Fraser on a similar commission known as the Fraser Album which is considered as a masterpiece. The company paintings were initially produced in Madras Presidency in South India and this new style of painting soon spread in several other parts of the country. For example, Calcutta, Murshidabad, Banaras, Agra, Patna, Lucknow, Delhi, Punjab as well as several areas in Western India. Finally, with the introduction of photography in 1840, a new dimension to painting was added. Now the emphasis was on producing works which could capture objective reality. Now the British art schools, oil and easel painting in the greatly inspired the beginning of or the continuity of oil and easel painting in India and this trend began around 18th century which saw several European artists like Zoffany, Kettle, Thomas and William Daniel or Joshua Reynolds, then George Chinnery, etc. They started coming to India in search of both glory as well as fortune. There were courts of several princely states in India that started patronizing European artists because these courts were also patronizing the visual as well as the performing arts and they were greatly attracted to the European style of portraiture also. Uh, then also an important role was played by the merchants of the East India Company who provided definitely a large market for native art. As a result, a distinct genre of watercolor painting on paper as well as mica emerged in the later half of 18th century and this included scenes of 
everyday life the way indians used to spend their day or also uh, basically the view of princely courts as well as native festivals ceremonies rituals all these began to be uh, painted time and again and there were different terms that came to be used for this style of painting for example company style or even patna style uh, because it flourished at first in murshidabad and later on it spread to other cities that were part of british suzerainty this particular style is also considered by authorities to be of a hybrid style and also not something which cannot be uh, discussed only with reference to european style of painting and after 1857 john griffith and john lockwood kipling they also came out and they kind of uh, started patronizing victorian painters uh, who came to india and kipling became head of both the jj school of art as well as the mayo school of arts that was established in lahore in 1878 so we see that this enlightenment that was coming about uh, during 18th century and the attitude that was shown by an earlier generation of colonial administrators towards indian history or monuments literature culture and art all this took an about turn and there was a reverse in the trend by mid 19th century so the previous manifestations of indian art were brushed under the carpet as being dead or as not being as important that they could be kept as ideals so therefore uh, they lost their importance as far as the british perspective about india was concerned and there began a trend of propagating western values in art education and there was specifically this colonial agenda uh, with which the british established art schools in calcutta and madras in 1854 and in bombay in 1857 now if we talk about the details of delhi book that was titled reminiscence of imperial delhi this is basically a collection of paintings that were done in company style these were commissioned by sir thomas metcalf as early as 1844 and this contains around 120 paintings by several indian artists mainly uh, the mughal painter mazhar ali khan and this book was brought by the british library and also displayed in london this is panorama in 12 folds showing the procession of the emperor bahadur shah zafar to celebrate the feast of eid Uh, in 1843 uh, then another example that can be given is that of fraser album which was a collection of paintings that were commissioned by british indian civil servant william fraser and it is also considered as one of the masterpieces of indian art as they developed during the colonial period this work is an important documentation again of the closing decades of the mughal empire uh, this artwork covered the life in the mughal era and it has several portraits of villagers soldiers holy men dancing girls also of ascetics uh, and village of rania as well as some indian nobles and afghan horse dealers some of the noted mughal painters like gulam ali khan and his brother faiz as well as the, the whole family worked on the fraser album after the financial support from mughal emperor declined and the album works were painted uh, roughly between 1815 to 1819 now if we talk about the material for most of these colonial paintings they were mostly on paper but sometimes ivory also was used specially in areas in and around delhi 
and the basic intention behind their production was to be kept in portfolios or albums. The murakka or album was very well established art among Indian collectors, though usually it included calligraphy also, uh, especially among the Muslim patrons. Then the style that developed in the second half of 18th century or by the beginning of 19th century, we can say that production was at its peak and with several cheaper paintings also being copied time and again. And by the 19th century, there were several artists that had set up shops to sell the work and they had also started developing workshops where such artworks could be produced. So art in India had a different purpose prior to the coming of the British. It could be seen as statues on temple walls or as miniature paintings that often highlighted manuscripts, decoration on the walls of mud houses and villages, etc. But with the colonial rule around 18th century, the English were charmed by different manners and customs of people belonging to different ranks, tribes, communities, religions, and then the tropical flora and fauna as well as different locales which they had not come across earlier. So as a result, there was a variety of subject matter, sometimes for documentation and sometimes for artistic reasons that several English officers started commissioning local artists to paint scenes around them to get a, get a better and more clearer vision of what type of country India was. The paintings were largely made on paper by local artists, some of whom had migrated from the courts of Murshidabad, Lucknow or Delhi. And they were uh, always ready to please their new patrons. Uh, so they also very readily uh, adapted uh, their traditional way of painting to document the world around them. This indicated that they had to rely more on close observation, which was a very important feature of the European style of art rather than only memory or rule books, which were the highlight of the traditional art forms in India. So therefore, this mixture of traditional and European style of painting that came to be known as the company school of painting had best of both the worlds. This style was not only popular among the British in India, but even in Britain, where albums consisting of a set of paintings were much in demand. And as the East India Company expanded its range, influence, power and control in India beyond trade to include diplomacy, political authority, administration, etc., now the company needed more and more officers as well as administrators to control their interests. And it was during this expansionist phase that the colonial masters in India, they became patrons of art also. So this, this uh, in turn created a demand for more works of art and hence the term came to be used liberally that is company school or company painting in the 18th and 19th centuries. Most of these paintings highlight the conversation between traditional Indian Islamic uh, schools with the Western schools, uh, which uh, brought about some kind of alteration or adaptation in Lucknavi, Marathi, Punjabi, Pahari, Tamil or Telugu style of art forms. Uh, and at the time, there was also a growing demand for Indian memorabilia in the European markets portraying the exotic as well as the picturesque landscape or life in India. So this wide genre included different 
trades that were being followed, the different professions that were being followed in India, then uh, social groups, flora, fauna, uh, very special views or buildings or uh, the military and its ranks, then the darbar scenes, the notch girls, depiction of local rulers, festivals, uh, the domestic scenes, the subject matter was very extensive and there was no end to it. Now, this demand became the creation of a visual record in the absence of photography and there was large scale use of watercolors on paper also to capture the facts as well as the fantasy of India. So, nurturing the desire to capture the picturesque and the ex exotic aspect of the land which now the Britishers were going to rule uh, besides recording the variety in the Indian way of life which the visitors to India as well as the residents, the British residents in India encountered became a very essential part of this project. As Dr. Xavier Bray who was director of the Wallace collection has stated in his introduction to the catalog, the artists were commissioned by an equally diverse cross section of East India Company officials, ranging from botanists to surgeons to members of uh, civil service, diplomats, governors, judges, as well as their wives, uh, and also some British artists and intellectuals who were passing through India just for pleasure, recreation or for any other purpose. But what all these different sections had in common was a scholarly interest in and an enthusiasm for India's culture, history as well as ecological biodiversity. Now, if we talk about the early phases of this school of painting, then artists mostly depended on a few key patrons. But by the beginning of 19th century, there were several enterprising Indian artists who had begun to create standard popular subjects that could be sold to these foreign tourists who were passing through several cities. And such sets depicted a range of monuments, festivals, castes, tribes, occupations, costumes, etc. And these became some of the favorite subjects. Uh, the company style arose in a number of different cities during more or less the same time. However, one cannot miss the regional diversity also that continued to influence and this was part of the local traditions as well. Calcutta was the important, one of the important early production centers as the site of one of the oldest British trading houses. Here an example can be given of the Impe album of company school painting. The leaves originally formed part of a collection of natural history studies that had been commissioned by Mary, Lady Impey, who was wife of Chief Justice uh, Elijah Impey. In this, the series of 326 natural history studies that were made and uh, they were commissioned between 1777 to 1783. This was both an amateur scientific ambition as well as it had an artistic vision. Lady Impey also as a collaborative patron played a crucial role in the, create, in the entire creative process and she helped uh, the artists in selecting suitable subjects and also kind of discussed their treatment or setting with the artists. And her own collection of birds and animals very often was the important subject for these artists. The Impes shared the keen scholarly curiosity as well as interest about India. And uh, they also had an extensive aviary at their Calcutta home. 
And as has been pointed out by William Dalrymple, Impey and his wife they began to collect a whole lot of rare Indian animals around 1770s, and they decided to bring a group of Indian artists who were very popular at that time. For example, Sheikh Zainal Din, then Bhawani Das and Ram Das, and these artists were given the task of painting the. Private zoo of Impey's, uh, and they used English watercolors uh, on English Watman watercolor paper, and they also uh, used English botanical still lives as their models, and hence the, uh, an extraordinary fusion of English and Mughal artistic traditions was created. The Impey's can be considered as the city's most enthusiastic patrons, uh, along with Marquis Wellesley, who served as Governor General from 1798 to 1805. Both these parties had collected a large, uh, a huge collection, uh, and had also hired artists to paint their uh, birds and animals, which they had started collecting. Uh, a company established botanical garden in Calcutta uh, also undertook a similar project for the samples of plant life it had collected, and this development took place between 1798 to 1804. Then we can also say that Lucknow became a very important center for company school of paintings, and Claude Martin. Uh, who had originally fought for the French, but later on he joined English East India Company, patronized a large number of such paintings. Martin was not just a military man; he was an architect, builder, founder of a bank, also a philanthropist, and he became a very important patron of. Arts. Uh, many of this collection is lost, but some around five to six hundred are still in the collection of Royal Botanic Gardens in UK. Through these paintings, the exhibition has explored different centers of Company School of Painting. For example, Calcutta, Lucknow, then Madras, Tanjore, Patna, Faizabad. Uh, Delhi. All these were very important centers of company paintings, and they all display an amalgamation of naturalistic representation as well as a nostalgia for the intimacy as well as stylization of medieval Indian miniatures. The artists of this school modified their technique to cater to British tastes. For academic realism, which definitely required more incorporation of Western styles, for example, representation of visual reality, use of perspective, volume, and shading, all these be became very important part of the entire process. Thank you.